It is August the 2nd of 2023. The, we were normally will be on the first Friday of the month, but there was a scheduling change and uh, Robin Long will be here on Friday doing her second lesson for the wonderful summer, summer blooms, winter wreath quilt process. And I've been watching the forum and folks that are working on that are having a good time and really learning some uh, a wonderful technique that Robin has uh, mastered everything. So so she's going to be with you on Friday and the uh, folks at TQS asked me if I could move to today, which of course I could. So uh, we'll give people a few minutes to get joined in here. We'll talk about month uh, eight, which is going to be more leaves and flowers. So we'll be talking about that here in a few minutes. I'm also going to show you around the, the website a little bit, show you how to find some really great resources that you may not even know are still available to you. So I want to show you those, particularly for people who have been asking me now about machine applique. Um, at this stage, a lot of people realize that hand applique, especially needle turn, is simply slower. And so they're interested in doing some things that uh, are a little faster. And machine applique can certainly be one of those. I've used machine applique on my quilt <laughs> for the simple things like the stems, the long pieces where it's real easy to zip around and get those all in place. I did that. And then when I got to the birds, which we'll talk about next month, in month nine, um, there, I just was ready to have those done and I knew I could get them done much faster by machine application. So we'll be talking a little bit more about that. Um, on the, the personal side where I know that some of you early birds, um, ask me these, these questions here, the, um, if you've been watching every month, maybe you, you've seen my journey a little bit, you, uh, you've seen the fact that, um, I've, I've changed some, <laughs> I've lost 95 pounds of, um, uh, effective this week from about a year ago. And so I'm uh, five pounds away from my personal goal. And then I think I'm gonna throw in a few extra pounds just kind of as a buffer there. Cause you know, the things happen, there's holidays and birthdays and things. Eh, I just wanna have a little bit of an extra cushion there. So, um, but anyway, so when I get there, which I believed will be sometime in August this month, I am going to publish a blog that, that I'm in the process of working on right now calling called how I lost a hundred pounds because people are asking me and they want to know. Um, I will tell you the simple answer. No, no gastric bypass, no lap band, none of that stuff. Uh, no gummies. Uh, I don't get my medical advice from Facebook or Oprah. Uh, so uh, it's diet and exercise. I, I've eaten what I'm supposed to eat and I enjoy it. Um, I love food and I've always loved to eat. So um, I've just realized that I don't love apple pie nearly as much as, as I love being healthy. And um, so anyway, but I will talk uh, much more about that. It will be in depth and I will answer all the questions. I have gathered a lot of pictures and um, especially the, the hard ones to show will be the really non-flattering ones, um, but that will help to show um, the, the process, the pro journey that I'm on. My blog is called My Joyful Journey, which has been about quilting, um, but this is also part of my life's journey as well. So um, anyway, so that's just for those of you who are curious, uh, it will be coming out soon. It'll just be one of my regular blog posts and, um, and I'll let you know when that comes up. So Okay, so we're a few minutes in. Let's see what we've got going here. Uh, you can ask any questions that you have in the chat. And before I leave, I'll go back to the chat. I can't see them now while I'm doing it, but I can see them um, before we uh, say goodbye today. So I'll go look. Um, so ask those questions if you have them. This month is really easy for those of you. Of course, last month we had to get that vine in place and that took some real doing. Um, the pattern didn't have many placement lines, which I thought was a challenge to try to get your vine in place. But uh, the people who asked very specific questions, um, and there were people who asked, how far does the vine hang down from here? And how far to the left? And where does it apply on the star? And I give that those kind of information to help. If I struggle to, to figure out the placement, I know that you're going to want to know those questions answered, the answers to those questions too. So I did that. Um, but this month, it'll be actually pretty easy. We're going to just continue to add leaves and flowers. The um, My blog list, for those of using the kit, and we have 450 people around the world using the kit. Um, so I found that I really struggled to figure out which fabric went where, even trying to look at the pictures. 
Now, at this point, it's a little late to say, but I'll go back and say what I've said about the, the kit. Originally, the easiest way for you to know which fabrics match with which ones in the fabric requirements list, and it can be a challenge because your photographs, if you print the page out, the pictures may not be the same color as what the fabric is. Someone said just on the forum the other day, but the selvages don't have the names of the quilt. I can't tell what the fabrics were. Well, the easiest thing to do um, for this particular kit was to simply find every fabric that was in the kit, and you can find it easily by the width of the fabric. There were some two inch strips, three inch strips, four inch, five, six, there were eights, there were tens, there were half yards. And by going, that's what I did with them. I laid them all out by the sizes that they were because that's how they were bundled. And then I figured out which fabric was which. And you could simply cut a small piece, very small, about a one inch piece off of each one if you wanted to and tape it on your piece of paper so you would know that that was the one. That helped um, for me to try to figure out. But when we got to this, this, um, this wide border, months, seven, eight, nine, I really had to, to struggle to figure out exactly which ones were where. And I made a few wrong choices. So mine are not the exact fabrics that, uh, and one in particular, I was really sorry. Later, when I was putting the list together for the blog, saying this this fabric number is the one that you want to use, this, the name of the fabric, I went, oh darn, that orange was not the one that should have been there. So, But I wasn't taking it off and changing it. So mine just stays the way it is. Uh, anyway, so that's my recommendation if you still struggle with those uh, kit fabrics is figure out by the width because each fabric listed in the fabric requirements tells you what width the strip was that was in the kit. Um, another one, another thing about this month's pattern is that the petal flower, and I'm going to go to the, let me, now's a good time, let me go to the document camera. Okay, the document camera shows this. All right. So the petal flower is this one, okay? And I really liked it. I liked the shape. I liked how it looked. It, it's comprised of four petals and a circle. Uh, in the fabric requirements list, when I went looking for the fabrics, there was no description anywhere of petal flower. And I thought, oh, that must have been omitted. But it wasn't. It was called flower. So in the fabric requirements, the fabric number for that one um, is... And I thought I had the number right there, vine flower, petal, petals, bluebell. Okay, yeah, the fabric for the, the petals was bluebell, and the center was snapdragon, which is a really pretty deep orange. But that's what it says. It says flower in the fabric requirements, and in fact, it's called in the pattern petal flower. So I know it's those sort of inconsistencies that um, cause people to have um, some angst and try to figure out what's supposed to be where. I found that of my four petal flowers, one of them turned out looking pretty much like this one. The other three, not so much. I just didn't have, I just laid the petals around and then and put a little dot of glue as Sarah's recommendation typically is for how you secure these pieces to the background. But when I stitched them down, they just didn't stay in this real nice, see the north, south, east, and west kind of an orientation. I would have done a much better job had I simply used a some kind of a light remo removable marker, whether it's a chalk pencil or a, I'm, I don't use a lot of the erasable markers because they don't always erase, but something that to give myself on the background, the shape, if nothing else, just to give myself the shape where, where these curves start. And then if I had done that on the background, the, the curves, then I would be able to be sure that I got them about right. And then your circle's gonna cover a myriad of sins. You know, if they don't line up just right, they're not supposed to line up exactly in the middle. You just cover that with a circle. So um, I would have done a better job, and I, I wish I had because I do really like that shape quite a well, quite quite a bit. The other page for month eight is this one, and it's uh, it shows the vine flower, the uh, vine flower top, and there was um, something that was discovered in the pattern um, this month that it says in the pattern that you needed four vine flowers each from two different oranges and four vine flower tops from two different purples. Well, no, you don't need four each. You need eight each 
because there are four vine flowers on each border and we have four borders. Therefore, we need 16 vine flowers, 16 vine flowers, and 16 vine flower tops. So, I mean, that's obvious when you start looking at them. The pattern says eight, and someone caught it, Linda, who checks uh, very well too. And um, I've, uh, obviously, I missed it. And if I could tell you how many times I have triple checked this pattern, quadruple checked, I, hours and hours of time was spent. Um, and still things slip through. And, and I hate that. But uh, anyway. So, but obviously eight's not going to do it. You need 16. So vine flowers and vine flower tops are the other change that you would want to make. I up, as soon as I was notified about that, I went into my blog and just updated it and made it uh, change it and indicated that that was a change. So we've got this kind of a, a leaf here. It's an odd little shape of a leaf. And we have that one. And we've got these small little bitty greens. When I, you can see all my pencil marks here. And I was trying to figure out which fabrics they were. And I had a list. Um, but then I discovered that I just was really struggling to try to match them. So I did write in the blog specifically the fabric names that match for those of us using the kit uh, to help so that you could, could tell. It was one of these vine flowers that used two oranges that was supposed to be a snapdragon color, which I love that snapdragon color. It's that rich uh, burnt orange kind of a color. And uh, I'm sorry that it's not on my quilt there because I would have really liked it quite a bit. Um, and I, as I said, I'm not taking it off and changing it. So um, that's just a design decision. So, okay, let me go back to our webcam here. All right. Um, I just mentioned that the one of my vine flowers was the wrong orange and oh well, it just, it just is. Um, so that was it. The other thing that I found a little bit challenging because again, there's no placement lines on any of the patterns is exactly how to put those vine flowers on. You, when you're putting the vine flowers on the borders, you just need to make sure that you leave at least a quarter of an inch space from the raw edge of the border, the official raw edge, which remember they will ultimately, if you've made them extra wide, you will be trimming them to exactly eight and a half inches wide and you need a little bit of breathing room. You don't want that vine flower to be right up there within the seam allowance. That would be really sad because you don't want to put the vine flower inside the seam allowance. So mm -hmm. I would look at that and see which way um, I needed to um, go and I would adjust the, the shape and the slant and how it would place so that I could make sure that I had space. And I would like a half an inch between the raw edge there so that I've got at least a quarter inch of, of bare space showing after the seam allowance is taken. So I've got that one and I've got that one. Okay. Uh, let me see if there's any questions for starters. And then I'm going to show you around a little bit. Alrighty. Okay. We've got South Carolina. We've got somebody on the road trying. Galena, Ohio, Florida. That's my friend Terry. Hey, Terry. Good to see you. And sunny and hot Southwest Florida. Alrighty. San Diego. <laughs> San Antonio. There's a spot I'd go anytime. Okay. All righty. Pittsburgh. Uh -huh. Okay. Ann Duffy says that she's going to have to be creative with placing her tulips because uh, the vines were off um, and she's got them placed up a little bit too high. Um, sorry that, that she saw the measurements too late. Um, <laughs> She said, I almost threw in the towel. Well, Anne, I'm glad you didn't. And it's really no problem placing your tulips in a way that they fit. That's all that matters. Simply think about a tree and think about in nature that they are not in a line in a row. They're just, they're just not. So um, it's easy. You just put them where they, where they go. Well, there is Carol um, Berry. Carol, if you haven't seen Carol's Fantastic Color My World, she entered it in the main quilt festival quilt show. She is the one who made Color My World last two years ago, 2021, her first ever quilt. 
And in wool applique with a gazillion different embroidery stitches, it is a phenomenal quilt. It, it's just wonderful. I encouraged her to enter it in um, the wider world shows and get it out there. She put it, the first show it went to is this main show. She won first place in its category. She won best use of embellishments, which is no big, uh, no little tiny deal. That's a big deal and a big show. And then the best prize of all, in my opinion, she won viewer's choice. So um, it's been on the newsletter. It's been in the blog. She's uh, she's and she's posted on the forum to her excitement. So, Carol, we are so, so thrilled and happy for you uh, and really excited about that. So. Um, Great. Kathy Morrison says, I just started this quote at the beginning of July and I'm happy to say I'm on month seven. Okay. The rest of us are slackers because Kathy is there to prove it can be done. So good for you, Kathy. We're excited. I hope you'll post some pictures on the forum. We'd love to see them. So, uh, okay. So let me go back here. All right. Now I'm going to share my screen because I want to show you around a little bit. And let me go over here to the forums. Okay, so here I am on the forum uh, where I go several times a day, uh, particularly in the first week of each month, because I know there's lots of questions and things like that. I am logged in. It says up here, welcome, Barbara. And I know I'm logged in because uh, there's my face. And I can check from mine. And I'm not sure if this is an admin thing or if you could check them. But in the inbox, I check. I can click on this and it will show me if there are... Any, uh, there it is. It'll show me if there's any notifications, preview any notifications. I have subscribed to every one of the accounts, so um, the forum category, so that I would find anything that anybody writes. So um, there was nothing new from an hour ago when I checked it before. But here's obviously all of the different places where you can find things. Those of you who are active on the site and using the forum, I know that you're familiar with going to Homeward Bound. So let me just click on that one. And then you find uh, these that are yellow. Uh, these are what are called sticky um, posts, sticky topics. I have secured, I've written them and I've left them there at the top. So you don't have to search by. We have six full pages here um, of Homeward Bound. So I've just got them in here. This one is about how to upload photos to the forum. A couple people still put a picture there. They're trying to follow the directions there. And that's where they put the picture instead of in the month four, show your progress here, month eight, show your progress here, that kind of thing. So I go into it and I move it. So if you put a picture where it doesn't belong, um, and, and I know that it could go into a better place where people will see it, I'm going to move it. And anyway, so there's other important things that people have asked about. Um, and if there were cutting errors, I put those there. And so you don't have to scroll and hunt and hunt. I leave them as a sticky where you can find them. So that's what, what there is. So um, let me see. I may not have month eight written yet. Oh, no, I may have forgotten to do a, a month eight yet. So I will get one of those, get those up. I do month eight, show your progress here. And month eight, show your, ask your questions here. And I'll get those. Yeah, I don't think I did. Okay, month seven. So here's a, I'll just show you the show your progress for month seven. One of the things I really like about this is that you can go here and simply, there's three pages and quite a few posts here. You can click on photos. And when you click on photos, it'll take you to just the photos. And then you could scroll through to look for them. Okay, so that's how that part works. And um, so that's that's what I wanted to show you on there. Now, one of the things that I wanted to talk about is, as I mentioned, that people have been asking about machine applique. And so, um, and someone asked me just the other day, what stitch did I use? And I used a blanket stitch. I use the exact same blanket stitch that Alex used. She and I have the same Bernina sewing machine, a 765, which is the same as the 770 sewing machine. And so we have the same stitches and she does a much better job with her videos because she's got a cameraman that helps her and has a great setup. And I'm not able to stitch at my machine and really show you things. So I'm going to show you how you can find a great little video from Alex. It's about 10 minutes long of how she does the machine applique exactly as I do it. So we go to learn. And we get in there and we go to Alex Anderson's classroom. And you can find them lots of different ways, but they're right. See, so you can search by classroom. So here's Alex Anderson's classroom. So I can click on that. And then we're looking for Alex Anderson's classroom. All right. Now that's her latest class. And she will be back doing more classes with us again soon. 
She is well on her mend and she's doing great. So um, she'll be ready to get back to us soon. Slow down, scroll down, scroll down. What you're looking for is neutral blooms. This was a class um, sometime last year. Neutral blooms. Okay, and we view neutral blooms. Okay, all right. And when I view it, I want to look at lesson five, finished machine applique. View. And now we go keep on scrolling, scrolling, come to lesson five right there. Click on lesson five. Okay, and we're gonna start it. All right, it is at about 10 minutes in. So let me come back here. Come on, about 10 minutes in. All right, so here's, here's where she's showing this. I'm gonna come ahead. Now she's talking about the settings for her blanket stitch and how she changes it. And now she's going to show, get in here. All right. Just, and there's it. She's stitching it and showing how that stitch works. Okay. That's the same foot I used. Let me stop that there. Okay, that is the Bernina open toe embroidery foot. On our machines, it's 20D because we have dual feed. Um, so there's um, that one. And it's a great video. She shows all the settings that she's changed. I'm going to tell you my settings, but you can watch. I learned these from her. So just go ahead and watch her video and do exactly what she did. That's what works for me. So that's how that one is. All right, so that's in Alex Anderson's classroom. So another place where we did great machine applique was in the 2019 block of the month called Sizzle. And that was by Becky Goldsmith. So I go to block of the month, I click on the down arrows and I can click on Sizzle 2019. And what you'll see here is this was the original opening page. Okay. There's nothing there anymore because of course, after the end of each year, all of the um, patterns revert the ownership revert, reverts back to the designer, in this case, Becky Goldsmith. So once we get, and that will happen this year, at the end of December of 2023, the patterns for Homeward Bound will go away. You need to save, copy, print, do whatever you have to do to save them if you're not all caught up because they will go away and we cannot give them to you. We no longer have the rights to use them once 2024 starts. So, but here's what I want you to see. Becky Goldsmith did 19 fabulous videos for her sizzle and all of the videos remain right here. So I click on view and I come sliding on down and there are several up here that would would apply if you are wanting to do prepared machine applique for homeward bound. This one on preparing for machine applique. There's another one on machine applique tips. See this one's 11 and a half minutes long. This is 10 minutes long. The one that I think is really very helpful is down here on machine applique tips for blanket or buttonhole stitch. And it's seven minutes long when I click on it and it shows exactly how Becky recommends. And you can see it's that same foot. It's the open toe embroidery foot. She's done a similar thing to Alex's description. She's got, it's a buttonhole stitch, which takes a bite to the left, back to the right and then forward left, right, forward, left, right, forward, like that. She shows how to get that point exactly there at the, at the beginning, right there at the tip, right there. So um, it is a wonderful video. And if you're ever interested in any of those kinds of things, these videos are still here. And that is another added bonus to all the things that you can get from uh, being a star member of the Quilt Show. So um, anyway, there's a lot of information there for you. And most people don't even know that they're there. Um, of course, we've got C quilts and C quilts. Since I'm in here, I because I'm logged in, I can see my favorites, and I have saved a few of the ones that I want to look at frequently. And so, garden party down under, and then this is homeward bound. And so I've got this picture here that when I want to see it, I don't have to hunt around. Then I have my pictures that have been posted, so I've saved those too. But the homeward bound picture, um, this, and there were a few different pictures. Um, from the colors, not great on that, but these were the pictures that I had to work on last summer when I was testing, or September when I was actually reading and testing the pattern. 
Um, so it wasn't didn't have a lot of great pictures of the entire quilt, which made it difficult to count numbers and things like that. So, okay, let me go back here. All righty to the webcam. All right, so uh, I hope that you've, uh, if you haven't, aren't familiar with looking around and seeing those kind of things, many people think, oh, well, the old block of the month, there's nothing there. The patterns are not there. But those videos and Becky's are well worth your time if you are interested in machine applique. And a lot of, she does a lot of great stuff. She had some wonderful videos. Her, her 19 videos were detailed and well thought out. And I think you'll, uh, you would benefit if you're doing more of the machine work. So, um, okay. I still have to, we'll go back and look for any more questions again. Um, next month, we're going to add more leaves and we're going to do the birds. And in order to do the first four, one, two, three, four, yeah, the first four birds that you'll put on are the ones that will go on the top and bottom borders where the vine is complete all the way to the end. And you'll place the, board, the birds there. Uh, you don't have any pictures or sketches in the pattern to show placement of the birds. So I've been asked, I was asked last month quite a bit, for, several people said, but where does the bird go? I'm trying to figure this out so I make sure that I get my vine in the right place. How high from the bottom is the bird? How centered? Where's the bird body? And I answered those questions on the forum. I will. Uh, they are in the blog for month nine, and I will talk about them on our month nine live visit here, which is scheduled, as I said, September 1st is, is the schedule of Friday. September 1st is where, when it's supposed to happen. Uh, and that's when I decided that machine applique was going to be the way for me. Each of those birds has the large bird body and it has a front wing and a back wing. And they're a little bit fiddly to get turned over. And um, actually, I had prepped this for you too. So I will show you this now as well. But I decided I would get those done by machine applique. And I did. And it took, you know, it took a couple days to get them all prepped and ready, and then I um, placed them. The nice thing is once you've got your machine set up, I was using matching thread color, so I would sit there and get all four of those birds on the top border and the bottom border. Once the top and bottom borders are done, then you need to add the two side borders. This is next month. You will add the left and right border so that you can complete the vine. The, the dangling vines that right now are on either end of the left and right borders have to get stitched in place before you can put the birds on them. So um, that's coming. That that will be in September. So let me go back now to document camera. I've still got plenty of time. So let me just show you here. This is what I have prepped for us a little bit to look at. Um, the This is my blanket stitch. And I used a purple thread just so that you could see it here. And um, I prepped these, and I did the birds this way too. I used Print and Piece Fuse Light, which is a um, paper, a fibrous paper that you can draw your patterns on. I printed them through the computer, uh, so I had the exact bird shapes. If you can reverse your printing on your printer where you can print in reverse, you, you need, half the birds have to go to the left and half to, have to go to the right. I wasn't able to do that or didn't know how to do that after I struggled with my printer, so I simply traced them backwards. The other four, I just traced them from the back. But then I use a glue stick. I like the Quilter Select Fabric Glue Pen uh, glue stick. It works really, really well. And I just secured the edges. This is prepared edge machine applique. So it, it, some people like raw edge, so they would simply just cut around on the raw edge and stitch right on top of the raw edge. I much prefer a turned edge just so it has the look of hand applique. But then you can, um, there's two ways to do these points. You can fold in one half like this, and then the left, right, left side, and right side, or you could come all the way down to one side like that, and again using glue, and then fold this guy back this way on this side, and you would get him nice and secure with glue and make sure you don't have any, any parts sticking out of the outside edge. But when you get the shape prepared, you look at it from this side and you make sure that it's, it's what you like, because what you see when you turn it over is what you're gonna see when you stitch it down. So, and then I just showed here the stitch. The ideally what you'd want to do, and that's what Alex's video shows. That's what I was just, why I took you there to her Neutral Blooms machine applique video. Um, because that's the one I went back to when I was setting all this up and said, now let me, where were Alex's um, guides again? What were those points? And so we've adjusted the stitch length. Mine is actually a 1.0 width and a 3.0 length. And it is going round. I, ideally you'd like to put a stitch right here on this point. That would be nice to secure that point just there. And then this point up here wasn't so much of a point as a smooshed end. 
So again, I go back to nature and go, you know, every leaf isn't perfect. So some of them have smushed ends and so do mine. So I just started and stopped here and I left these two tails so that you could see. She uses a little tiny back stitch where she could just cut the threads right off. I prefer to just pull the threads to the back. So on the top, I have purple thread. On the back, I have a neutral. And this one happens to be an ivory color and an off-white. I use 80 weight quilter select thread in the bobbin. A it, it, it's a fine thread, so you put a lot on these big bobbins. And then I used a 60 weight on the top, a thread color. With my green leaves, I used a really pretty green that just disappears. You don't see it at all. But in order to tie those off, I just simply pull on the bobbin thread on the back. That pops the little uh, purple piece to the back. I use a pin or a stitch ripper. Pull it to the back and do a double knot and cut them off. So I would. one of these was the beginning tail and the other one was the ending tail. So that, but that's what Alex's shows um, and how she did it. And her video is really great. It's, as I said, it's about 17 minutes long, starts at about 10, 10 minutes in and goes six or seven minutes so that you can see that. So, okay. Laptop webcam. Okay. So since I had that ready for you, I thought I would do that. Another stitch, if you don't have the blanket stitch or you don't want to do a blanket stitch, a very narrow zigzag will work too, that you just decide. We have these great stitches on our machines and we use two of them. So try different things and see which one you like so that you can see what's going to work well for you. The nice thing for me about using the print and piece fuse light on the back is it serves as a stabilizer. And I don't find that I have any real problem with, I don't have to adjust the tension on the stitch. It just goes really well. You might have to adjust the tension of the stitch. If you get um, ton, it's called tunneling, where you kind of get where the stitches are pulled in, either on the top or the bobbin. It's a matter that you need to make some adjustments to your uh, tension. Make small adjustments and test, small adjustments and test. And when you find the sweet spot, write it down so that you remember where it's going to be, um, what you want to use the next time that you use it. So all of when I don't have to go to Alex's Neutral Blooms video again anymore because I've written it down, Alex's Machine Applique. And I uh, marked the stitch number, which on our machine is number 1329. And my stitch width is, a, as I said, 1.0 wide and 3.0 long. And I also save that. The, the, these Berninas allow you to save stitches in a, in a folder. So I have a set of straight stitches that I save in one folder. And I have a, sti a set of any stitch that's not a straight. So a zigzag or these blanket stitches or that kind of thing. Uh, I've got that saved. So it's easy for me to find when I want to do it again. I don't have to reset everything up. So it's really good. Uh, on the, each month's pattern, the last thing at the, uh, on the pattern that Sarah has written is make sure you post your progress on social media. I know Sarah does like to see. She's on Instagram. Um, and so she likes to see the, what you've done. So you can cer certainly use the, the hashtags uh, at the Quilt Show Social and at Sarah Filke so that she can see what you're doing. And then we, we have hashtags as well. That's hashtag the Quilt Show BOM 2023. And you can use that for Instagram or Facebook as well. That way it makes it easy for people to see what you've got. So um, I am going to see now if there are any more questions. Let's see what we've got here. All righty. Back up to the beginning. Okay. And Carol and yes, Ann just asked about what stitch have I used on the machine applique the bird. Um, she's machine appliqueing everything and well, Anne, I you're here, so I am thrilled that I hope that you saw um that little tour that I took you to and spend a little time watching Becky Goldsmith's video on the machine applique with the blanket stitch and Alex's video. And that those two little videos, you'll spend less than 20 minutes. And you will, that's like a master course in machine applique, just those two little videos and you will, it, it's great for you. Um, somebody asked about flower leaves, uh, 16 flower leaves and where are you flower leaves? That's a weird one. Yep. There are only four. You don't need 16. There are four. My note on my note said 16. I think I probably traced 16, but I ended up only counting out four. So that was good catch there. And Southern Indiana. And we're so proud of Kathy that she's zipped along there. And um, Carol's enjoying her wonderful. Carol's quilt is going, the Color My World is going on to the AQS show. And I want to say it's Grand Rapids is the next AQS show. 
Um, some of GD Science instances when the pattern reverts, will you help will your help still be available for us slow pokes? My blogs will exist as long as Blogspot still exists, and hopefully that'll never go away. So the blogs absolutely will exist. Uh, and all of the forum, we keep our forum. So all of the forum is there, and you can continue to access the forum. Uh, it's hard for me when I'm working on the next one to go back and answer detailed little questions about um, the previous year's blocks of the month. And some people come from, from a block of the month from like four years ago and tell me, what does this mean on page such and such? Well, I'd have to get out page such and such and study it and look at it and think about it. And the chances are that I'm just not going to have time to do that. But almost everything that is of any importance on any of these blocks of the month, I have written a blog in the blog about it. So um, I hope that, and Judy Johnson said I've answered that too. Were the birds difficult to stitch around the beaks? No, not really. But I'll tell you what I found difficult with the birds, so I didn't do them. The birds have an eye that is about a quarter of an inch circle, and it's designed for reverse applique. I've done reverse applique before, and I, I do like the technique, but it's the bigger the piece, the better. And that quarter inch circle I knew was just not going to work for me. And once you cut the top layer to reveal the back layer, I'm not going to be happy if it's not pretty <laughs> like, I, like I wanted it to be. So I decided to, um, at the moment, my birds are sightless. They don't have eyes. But I, while I was teaching in Iuka in Corinth, Mississippi, here a few weeks ago, I um, came upon and was gifted a package of little snaps, black snaps, you know, snaps for garments. And they're small. They're about a quarter of an inch. My birds are uh, going to have snaps for eyes. And I'm going to sew those on before I, uh, I've sold the top. And before I give it to the new owner, I'm going to, to sew eyes on those sightless birds. The other thing that was difficult to me, so I did not do it, was there's a very small heart on each bird. Uh, again, reverse applique, and it's about a half an inch. It's pretty small. And so um, I opted again not to do it. And I thought, well, I could put a heart on the outside. But um, no, I decided not to. So again, when this top is um, given its new home to its new owner, I'm going to suggest that she should make this quilt her own by including the eight hearts and let her put her eight hearts so they will have her heart on them. So her heart will be in our quilt together. Uh, that's my plan and I, that's what I'm, that's my story and I'm sticking to it. So uh, Marcy says she learned so much from me and thanks. Well, that's always nice to hear. Um, I do try to put some time into this. Print and piece views light. Struggle needle turn. Okie dokie. All right. And Kathy, again, who's you know caught up, we said, so she's been using Karen K. Buckley's Mylar, which you can buy as well. And that, that allows you, it's a heat resistance, resistant plastic. So you can cut the shapes out of it and actually press uh, onto that around it. And so that's another good way to do that. All right. Let me go back over here so I can see you all again. All right. Uh, a few months ago, you some of you were here when my, my granddaughter Stella was here. She's uh, She and her brother have been with us for the last couple of days. They start school tomorrow. Sammy's four, almost five, and he's going into pre-K. And Stella is eight now, and she starts third grade tomorrow. Um, Pup Up has taken them to a movie, so we wouldn't be interrupted today. But when Stella asked me why I wasn't going to the movie, I said, no, I'm going to talk on the live to my friends. And she says, oh, all around the world? I said, yes. She said, tell them I said hi. I said, OK. So Stella sends her, her best wishes to you all. Um, OK, I think that'll do it for today. That my first order of business as soon as we get off here is to go into the um, forum and create the two new topics, month eight, ask, quest ask your questions here, and month eight, post your progress here. Uh, so I'll be looking for your progress and I'll be looking for your questions. Um, anyway, um, I don't have anything else for you today, but I always, like I said, I look for your questions and I'm happy to answer them on the forum. And if you have a question, someone else probably has the same question and we'd like to be able to answer them uh, and keep you on the right track so uh, you can uh, get this quilt finished because finished is better than perfect. Um, so until next.